May I Eat It by Jasmine Davis. There's a young boy in the city whose questions were many. He was new to the Torah keeping life. From how do we get here to where are we going and learning how to be wise. Like most mornings, he began his routine. He would wake up, give thanks to Yah, brush his teeth. Then after he had washed his face and made his bed, he would come down to the kitchen to eat. Good morning, Aaron, the father said happily. We'll be leaving tomorrow morning for our Sukkot camping week. Pack as little as you can, bring only what you need. We'll be sleeping in tents, being shaded by trees. We'll hunt and gather our food, and we shall have plenty. We'll thank y'all for the gift of Torah, and remember the 40-year wilderness journey. The little boy was in a bit of shock. He had never been camping before. Concerned about food, comfort, and safety, he wanted to pack more. But he honored his father's command and only brought his shoes, shirts, and pants. And with the space he had left, he packed his toothbrush, some soap, and his hat. The morning came and the family was prepared. While they were loading up the truck, Aaron seemed scared. He asked, We're going to be up there for seven days, and we've only packed a few things. How will we survive this full Sukkot week? The father replied, Look at the birds of the air. They neither reap, sow, or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you, who's made in his image, not of more value than they are? Yah has set aside provisions. The little boy, with his newfound confidence, took his place of shalom. He was quiet, and he rested for the remainder of their journey down the road. When they arrived, they gathered their things. We are here, said his father. The place will be camping. Walk down the path, find a spot shaded with trees. So the little boy scanned the land in search of something to eat. He asked his father, I'm looking around and I see so much life, things I've never seen before. How will we know what is good to eat and what things we should ignore? His father heard him and was filled with joy. Another opportunity to share Torah with my boy, he exclaimed. Praise Yah for the gift of today. Guide us, Father, as we are on our way. His father gave him a bag and some baskets and told him to come along. I'm going to share with you Yah's loss for food, and I'll do it by way of song. From every herb from the ground, if they're green and yielding seed, by this you will know that it's good for you to eat, and of the fruit of the trees, when they're ripe, they're good to eat, as long as they are yielding seeds. As they gathered their herbs and fruit, they found a print of cloven foot, and if there's one, there must be another, so they followed its path, one print after the other. Father said, Aaron, look over there. The footprints we follow belong to that deer. The little boy looked in wonder, and his belly began to growl. Is that deer good to eat? I'm getting hungry now, his father said. Never be quick to take a life, for if it has a natural body, there's a spiritual one inside. And although we have a different purpose, if you look beneath the surface, we all have senses and emotion, as well as earth's lands and earth's oceans. Is it clean is our concern? We'll have to take a look and see. Our Heavenly Father tells us how to identify these things. Get low to the ground and stay quiet. We have already seen his feet. Now we must know his diet. If it has parted hoofs and cloven footed, check on the first test. If it chews the cut in half for stomachs, passes all the rest. If it lacks in one criteria, you'll know that it's inferior. So watch so you'll be sure to spot if it's good for food or not. The deer is clean, so we could eat it. But that's way too much meat. We'd be better to leave it. So they kept on walking, and Aaron heard something chirping loud. He asked his father, what is making that sound? Hmm, said his father. Well, you're hearing our crickets. And by the sound of things, it's coming from the thicket. Go over there and grab all that you can find. Your mother and I won't be far behind. So Aaron listened and obeyed his father's will, imagining what it would be like to have crickets for a meal. He went over to the log, and boy, was there plenty. He thought, are we really going to eat these, or am I just being silly? 
filled the little basket. He knew he had caught more than enough, but the question of can I eat it was proving to be tough. He asked his father, These crickets I have here in my bag, are they a food to eat? I thought eating insects are bad, most definitely unclean. His father replied, Like the plants and animals, we only eat a few. And like the two before now, I have a song for this one too. From all the creepy crawlies, we're told to stay away. Except crickets, locusts, and grasshoppers. Can we eat them? Yes, you may. They have wings to fly and legs to leap and feet to crawl around. And thank heavens they're not hard to catch. They're crawling on the ground. The father took the crickets and led his family to a stream. Then he grabbed himself a cricket and tied it to his string. We are going to fish with these crickets. Fish will make the perfect dish. Or we can be like John the Baptist and eat him if you wish. Aaron replied, No, thank you, Father. I'd rather fish. They're right here so close to us, we can grab them just like this. Little Aaron jumped in the water, thinking his idea showed some smarts. His father yelled, We can't eat that. That fish is a... But Aaron had already grabbed it. But then the fish flopped out and he lost it. But before it hit the water again, an eagle came down and snatched it. Son said his father. Ask before you act. If you would trust in me, your father, we could avoid moments like that. The little boy was a little shook up. A lot had happened at once. Then he said to the eagle, you're lucky you flew away or I'd have you for my lunch. Then his father sang, now, now, son, you can't eat that bird either. If you know it hunts for prey, it'd be right for you to leave her. And if for the living things you may find in the water, it must have fins and scales. We may only eat it if the fish is clean, unlike catfish, shrimp, and whales. You see, we may only eat it if it's clean. That's the instruction of our father. And as for unclean things, don't even bother. It's not good for food. That's the instruction of our father Who said our bodies we must honor So that's what we will do whoop, whoop, yeah. They gathered their things And caught only what they could eat They had herbs for a salad And the fish they had for meat Settling in their tents Nice and warm by the fire they set each other's plate and gave thanks to the Father. Aaron prayed, Thank you, Yah, for the food you provided and the family that you have given. And I thank you for your sacrifice so that we may be forgiven. Thank you for your instructions on what is clean to eat. I only want to eat the things that are good for me. And lastly, I just want to say, Thank you, Abba Yah. I had a wonderful day. Amen.